Grand Rising, my friends. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? Always thinking about the most beautiful subscribers in the solar system. Several solar systems now. We are on the move. Ladies and gentlemen, and anything else you may decide to be in that. If you're new here, Shalom, we're going to get into the stock market to see that, you know, inching along, the Dow is up, the NASDAQ is up. Sorry, the NASDAQ is down. S&P 500 is up today. Boeing had a pretty good day of 3%. Uh, Merck up 2%. Anybody with major losses in these kind of the kind of big 30 U.S. companies? Uh, just somebody with some percentage losses. Nothing too crazy. Crypto is still been hovering just a shade over 40000 at $41,717. Ethereum is now under 3,000 at 2,867, Cardano at $2.07, XRP 93 cents, Solana $136.40. Do you know that it, you can also get 6% annual yield on Solana just by holding it on a Exodus wallet, exodus.io? It's a desktop wallet where you can hold a lot of cryptocurrencies and change in between cryptocurrencies. I highly recommend it for people. Like one of the first steps, I may even set it in that video. I probably did. I did probably. You know, Coinbase to Exodus, Exodus then to cold storage or MetaMask to do. And you can go Coinbase to MetaMask as well to do different things in, on the, the Ethereum and Polygon blockchain. Or I should have looked it up, but I haven't. Yorori for the Cardano. I may be butchering that. Butchering that. Never advice on anything, not your advisor. I am not your advisor for anything, on any matter, for anything. All purely entertainment. Just, um, just we kicking a bobo here. Is that the old expression I just haven't used in years, but that may be what's up. Uh, the Ethereum is almost getting close to 400,000. Ethereum has been burned forever. But remember... Ethereum is an unlike Bitcoin it doesn't have a hard cap. It's minted every day. But now there's days where there's more being more Ethereum burned than minted. So it can become deflationary at some point. The Ethereum is burning and continues to burn. If you're new here or you've been here for a while, you understand that we bought a lot of positivity here on this here channel, whatever we call it, leave it channel. It feels weird to say that, but it is what it is. And part of that positivity is thinking about somebody in your life that has reached out to you and, you know, may have modeled the way that a citizen should behave. Or, hey, I also, you know, when I, I, I tell people that I work with or have trained for various things that also look for the people who do horrible things. And, and you know, you can learn just as much from a, a bad role model as a good role model. You learn how not to be in life. You know, you don't just sit in, 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 in a way approaching it. It's about appraisal. And you can approach a situation in anger or, OK, what lessons do I learn from this to take forward with me? Because guess what? You're going to be going forward. And so. That will be the way it is. And if this person, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rambled off with that. This person's your life, you know, write nice comment about them down in the comment section, forward them this video, share it with them and say, hey, take a look at what I wrote about you on the internets. The internets, the algorithm will enjoy that and you will help, help me out. I don't know if it help. Eh, I guess, I don't know. I guess the reason why I do this because, you know, I think I have interesting insight and see things that may be helpful to people to kind of make their lives a little bit better. So, yeah, you know, that's probably the reason why. <clears throat> Get that done. Feel happy about things. We happy. I'm happy. We all we all good. So got some 
some interesting stories today. Oh, yeah, kind of. Um, I had set this up the day before, but you know, things and things. But got it ready, so let's get into the movies. It's not the movies, but <laughs> the stories for the day. The SR seventy two. And I'm not sure if you are aware or how well you know the SR-71, the Blackbird, which is a device created by Kelly Johnson at Lockheed Martin back in, I would say, first probably thought up in the 50s and came to fruition in the 60s. If I'm not mistaken, Kelly Johnson went to my high school, but, you know, decades before I was born. <laughs> but... That you know, I was when I've heard that, and I didn't learn that. I, you know, I was a fan of him. I've I've loved avia aviation, and the planes like the the a the A twelve, which the SR seventy one. You know, the A twelve was the demonstrator and became the model that the CIA used of these uh, vehicles that were very fast and high performance that could fly over their radar. Basically, who cares what country it was, but over everybody's radar and take pictures at their, you know, I won't say at their leisure, but at safety, not relative safety, at safety, because there was never shot down. The SR-71 became the US Air Force's, you know, standard fleet model of the A-12 Oxcart. I've been watching stuff and reading books about these this stuff for decades now it's crazy how time flies but literally decades now so it's always i've always been fascinated with the with these uh, th these planes when they would fly would fly so high and so fast that united you know our uh u.s airline pilots thought they were ufos and were so that's where part of that ufo mythology was allowed to where the government knew there was probably things that they couldn't explain but at the same time was also a good cover for the aircraft that we were working on at that time so you know it kind of spiraled in, out of control in that in, in that sense but anyway so that's the sr-71 which is a plane that's flown since the 50s was the one of the fastest highest flying uh, human built vehicles of all time and it's been retired and now they're talking about of course it has to be in and Look, there's a lot of my one of my favorite vehicles. You said you want to get me something. A vehicle I want is the TR, the TR3B. You know, I have a shirt with it on. One day I'll show it. It says the, the Locust. That's what they call it. The TR3. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That may have been a book I was reading that talked about it. But the TR3B. Look that up. So the this is what's on, on you know on the books, and we know it's being built. What I'm about to talk about next is SR-72, which is the successor to the SR-71. And they call it the son of the Blackbird, the Air Force's Mach 6 monster. The SR-71 usually flew at Mach 3, 3.5-ish. Don't, you know, look it up for yourself. It's all documented. And probably could get up to a little bit higher for some in terms of afterburner, very short periods to get away if necessary. But, you know, for the most part, operated in a Mach 3 range. The... I'm going to say the baby boy, baby bird, the baby bird uh, is coming in about twice as fast. So these, this, we're talking about speeds that faster than bullets travel um, once they get up to speed. As I say here, uh, the Lockheed Martin SR-72, also known as the Son of Blackbird, is a hypersonic unmanned aerial vehicle concept that's being developed under the company Skunk Work, under the company Skunk Work, which is their special group inside the company that works on advanced aerial design or event development programs. The next generation aircraft has been tabbed to be the highly anticipated successor to the SR-71. They retired from service in 1998. Since that year, the company has made several attempts to develop one, but has been unable to do so. I'm not going to get into too much into the, the design of the engines, but it's going to use hypersonic technology to be they talk about like the wave runner and our, our missiles that we're using now that um so accelerates the mach 5 i think they use a booster rocket get up to mach 5 and use a ramjet and then after they get to around mach 6 or 7 i think a scramjet comes in so a ramjet is you ram in air into look I'm not claiming like i take my advice for me like i said i'm not a uh 
aero engineer, but regular engine, you have oxygen coming in, jet engine, and you put a little bit of fuel and ignite it. It burns with the air that's coming in, and that gives you the thrust, that gives you, the, you know, the power to go forward. A ramjet has nozzles where it forces the air in a certain way, so the air is faster and much harder to ignite, but when you can't ignite it, you get more power in the same area which goes faster and the scramjet takes that concept even more where it's not even moving parts i believe it's just you have this air coming in at supersonic speeds supersonic i think this was supersonic ramjet super was scram and so it then when you ignite that you go even faster i think we talked about in here before that the speeds they're talking about is in the in the range anywhere from like mach 9 to mach 27 like <laughs> we, our mind barely can even understand what that's going to look like uh, <laughs> for the most part. And I think I saw something, and we'll come back to it if that is true, that they said North Korea tested a hypersonic weapon, hypersonic missile. So anyway, this vehicle is envisioned as an unmanned, reusable, hypersonic ISR. I believe that stands for Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Platform. We gotta double check that. And strike and strike aircraft and strike aircraft capable of Mach 6 flight or nearly double the speed of his predecessor. So then they said they also not only are they gonna use this Mach 6, the strike operations, I was gonna talk about, not only gonna use the Mach, yeah, intel, high speed intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance and strike operations. The first flight of the SR 71 demonstrated is anticipated in 2023 and full-scale inner service by 2030. They are also thinking of combining not only this hypersonic flying unmanned vehicle, but with high-speed strike weapons, which are hypersonic missiles. So not only will this be able to, how did they, did they describe? Yeah, where like, it'd be able to take off and get to anywhere in the world in less than an hour, right? Yeah, expected strike targets anywhere across the continent in less than an hour. So not only can it go super fast almost anywhere in the world, but then they shoot missiles that travel just as fast. <laughs> so are we fighting wars on them? On them? Well, let me look in cyberspace on the nanoseconds. I'll go say, are we fighting wars in a, in a ma manner of uh, milliseconds? But in cyberspace, it's even shorter. Picoseconds, probably. Fimo seconds, probably, probably much more. Anyway, crazy machine. Can't wait to see what it looks like in flight. It's going to be dope. I love stuff like this. Robotic, this is, we're not going to go deep in this. This gets way into the weeds. But robotic process automation and intelligent automation are accelerating. And this gets so deep that... I, I got super lost trying to understand this. But feel free to go look this up and get it. This talks about basically these processes that uses artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, NLP, and these. So we'll just get to the definitions of IA and RPA. Now I could understand that a little bit. The difference is you have some programs that are not as intelligent and can do very simple tasks and some that are a little bit more intelligent. So what do we mean not that intelligent? You you go online, you order something. So the email comes in, you have your artificial intelligence that, you know, has this form that you fill out pre-printed, sees the form, fills out other information, gets your invoice started. It's very simple task that it can just bop, bop, bop. Um, that's the, the quote unquote, not as intelligent versus the other ones, which are more intelligent. And they say that's more of a can take the data in a, you can, like people can scan something, send it to you, you can take the data from that and interpret the data and sort the data and categorize the data. Those are the two different types of automation that are accelerating more than they be thought so in the industry to uh, mimic human beings. So, you know, we, we, we all use it and see it in our day life. You order something and then and within, you know, what? A minute, 30 seconds, you get a invoice, a confirmation for your order, and that, that's part of that, that technology. And then it also goes further where, you know, 
I guess probably the dark side of it, you get these robocalls <laughs> that try to, and yes, and yes, and try to match your tone and figure out, you know, we're not there yet with that, but it's going to get closer. So you got to be careful. The deep fakes are really going to mess people up where they'll be able to take anyone's voice and call you with it and have it sound just how my voice sounds with a natural cadence with the prosody prosody is the ups and downs and the ooh, the ooh, the ooh, the ooh. that's the prosody of someone speak the natural flow of that and we can talk about how people have problems with that so automation artificial intelligence automation do you know they have artificial intelligent computer program it's like the matrix computer program codes that write other codes you know, it's, it's to the point where you can just say, hey, make an app where it's kind of like how with Tony Stark work. Make an app. You just speak out loud. It hears you interprets in in real time, close to real time. Implement what you're saying in English. Most people just don't know to go and access this stuff, but these programs exist where you can. OK, let's let's create an app. Now, I want the app to have uh, half of it to be about collecting stamps and the other half to be about collecting postcards and you know, it, and, and it'll start to put together your idea in, in you know in a way then and you can oh, okay no change that go that to this color that's that's where we're going it's called no code technology we'll do a story about that soon i'm sure something will pop up now that i mentioned it into the ether and the synchronicity and we'll do a story about that Quantum computing hits the desktop. No cryo cooling required. Now, I'm trying to figure out if this is a um, an advertisement from these people who just wrote their own article and put it up because part of it seems that, and part of it is just we're not at that point yet. So anyway, this Australian German company is developing powerful quantum accelerators the size of graphic cards, allegedly. They work at room temp because the stuff I'm saying to people who know it all sounds like, OK, and I got a bridge that I'm going to sell you. Or, hey, you know, the Statue of Liberty has been in my family. Would you like to buy the arm? You know, come on. They work at room temperature, undercutting and outperforming today's huge cryo cooled quantum compute supercomputers. And soon they'll be small enough for mobile devices. And this is. The IBM model, 217, circa 217, meaning around the year 217, a 16 qubit quantum processor encased in cryogenic chamber. OK, that's with IBM. But these people saying, hey, we got it ready for a desktop. It looked like they just slapped a bigger face. <laughs> like I'm not going like I said. It is. And I wish this is true. So, hey, I hope this is true. Because, you know, it will greatly accelerate where we're going to go with technology. But it's a lot of big claims. It's a lot of big claims. So, and I only seen it one place. You'd imagine this story would have been everywhere if this was true, that a company realized how to shrink down quantum technology to the size, a quantum accelerator to the size of a graphics card. But they, you know, said they, they're using... White paper, room temperature diamond quantum computers consist of an array of processor nodes. Each processor node is comprised of a nitrogen vacancy NV center, a defect in the diamond laces consisting of a sub substitutional, substitutional nitrogen atom adjacent to a vacancy, and a cluster of nuclear spins. The intrinsic nitrogen nuclear spin and up to a close to nearby I mean, sorry, uh, close to four nearby 13 C nuclear spin impurities. Now, I, 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 if this makes sense or if this is just ghibli uh, gook, I mean, the, the words make sense. But in terms of quantum mechanics, if somebody sees it, like, oh, OK, wow, that's something we never thought to do, because supposedly they're working for not entanglement they're getting quantum processes so you know imagine it's still early technology when we talked here about entanglement where you get all of the uh, these qubits to to get um, ingrained and kind of be like a wave where they be all separate but now they're like oh we're all attached and not even like a wave one thing happens to one you know it's 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 it's, it, it's it, the interaction travels faster than the speed of light so 
that's been tested uh, scientifically in the real world that quantum entanglement has to be travel faster, not has to, it can travel slower than if it's closer, but it can travel faster than the speed of light. And you ask how they do it? Well, you know, go look to see what the research, they actually uh, did an experiment to test that. And you know, how they do it, they had two entangled uh, um, uh, cubits a distance enough apart that when they you know, made a change, looked at another, it, the change was faster than it would have took time to make that, uh, um, it, you know, it was over, set over a great distance. These things happen on this earth. If you don't know that about particle accelerators and a lot of these, I think we even talked about where they did a study where it was like they had two entangled qubits over 27 miles, something like that. Anyway, it's been tested in a laboratory. <clears throat> you can look it up. So, but this is about the nuclear spin act as a qubit to the computer, while the NV center acts as a quantum bus, buses, acts quantum buses, okay, that mediate the initialization and readout of the qubits and the intra and internal multi qubit operations. Quantum computation is controlled via radio frequency, microwave, optical, and magnetic fields. The field itself is not new. Indeed, room temperature quantum qubits have been around experimentally for more than 20 years. But they're talking about that they said they've been able to manufacture these tiny things precisely and replicably, as well as miniaturizing and integrating the control structures. You need to get information in and out of the qubits, the two key areas that have held these devices back from scaling beyond a few qubits to date. So not only did they say we, able, we were able to master this room temperature, quantum process, but they were also able to miniaturize. It, it, they basically built the Iron Man suit. It's like how, you know, Tony Stark built a reactor in the movies. It was different in the comic books, but let's just go with it, the movies for the moment. Built a reactor power source that no one is, you know, it was theoretical. They had a, a showy prop one in their facility, but he made it a practical device, miniaturized for use, and then created a... A, a suit that no one had ever seen before with all the proper controls and everything that we've been trying for for ever since um you know you 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 had uh knights in um armor you know that was trying to be trying to create an iron man suit they just you know you were just you were the the the, the repulsors and everything <laughs> you were moving around as the the process but over time they were yeah trying to work out how to make this more um mechanized so that's why I was like, man, I don't know if this is, if, this, if these individuals, and it's long, and it's just like, eh, and, they, and they hit, and they, look, the source, the source is quantum brilliance. It's the people themselves. So I was right, this is advertisement. So grain of salt. But if they are able to use some quantum processes, even, you know, basic ones and marry them to a classical computing situation, it may have a benefit. We'll see. We'll keep our eye on things. Boy, I spent a long time on that. Let's get into some, uh, but if you had that computer, what if you had that quantum computer now and you could mine Ethereum with it? <laughs> I would probably be mining Bitcoin, quite honestly. You had a computer that just was way more powerful than everybody else and you could jump in a, in a uh, on there. I mean, look, you know, it'd be hard, but you'll, you'll do it okay. You'll make a okay um, amount of, of uh, coin with your quantum computer now. If you wanted to dirty, like true quantum and had it versus everybody else, and you just started just going there and changing little things and everybody, they, you know, you know you're just like, no, I'm just going to mine like everybody else. So there's an app, new desktop app, makes it easier to mine Ethereum. Tharg, I guess, is a free, like frog, throg, I guess, is a free Ethereum mining app for PCs on a Golem network. Users are paid not in Ethereum, but in the Golem's GLM token. So... You can mine Ethereum, but you have to get you have to put in a little work and do some technical skills and you will basically mine in this other coin. Then you have to convert it to Ethereum and then you have the Ethereum. I mean, if you want to convert it to cash, which, you know, I don't know why people would, but sometimes, you know, maybe some every now and then if you need to pay off with the, like your electricity of what you're doing for it. But a lot of this is accumulation right now so find little things that you can accumulate these as well 
You know what I mean? At some point you want to sell it, but you may want to, like, well, should I use it? We hope for that day where it's like, well, you could, but why would you want to? Better yet, well, you know, use it as collateral if you need uh, to purchase something. Use these use these assets as collateral. That's what the rich people do. They don't sell their properties. They put it up and take a loan out for it and then find a way to not pay that loan off. Keep it, keep punting the ball down uh, down the field, as we say. Anyway. At any one time, there are millions of machines mining Ethereum, contributing to network security and validating transactions in exchange for the chance to earn some ETH. But to make mining profitable, most people need expensive hardware with lots of computing power. Golem Network, an Ethereum-based platform for sharing unused computing power, has a small solution for those who want to contribute to the network without going all in. So they come out with this app, and basically, like I said, you, you passively mine ETH on a home computer, leveraging the Golem Network to help people quickly scale up their resources without filling their room with hardware, and... Blah, blah, blah. So you have to have a computer with a pretty strong graphics card, you know, that would make any sense, to be quite honest. So they say if you're more like a somebody who has a computer with graphic card but don't use it that much, there's some way you can kind of get some extra money off something you use. So you get the, shoot, you may have to get the GLM, then change it to Polygon, then into Ethereum. That's why I said it's a uh, thematic as Polygon's um, token. That's why I was like, this may be something people may uh, find too too difficult. But a lot of people are doing this and they're making money. So why shouldn't you? You know, why why do you let yourself get discouraged by what seems to be hard? You can definitely probably go on YouTube, YouTube somebody. You are on YouTube you're watching this, so stay on YouTube and watch more of my videos. And then um, just put that in: how to mine Ethereum using Throg. And then watch a couple, I've watched like four or five people doing it, get a sense of different ways people do it, similarities and find out, okay, I think this way would be the best way for me. I tell you, don't just watch one video and do what that person do. Watch, try to find at least three to four, if not more, five or six different people talking about the same exact subject and see the similarities and the differences. It's like, that's how many times you're like, oh, okay, that's a better way that way. Or, oh, if you combine what that person's doing with this person, it'll be, you know, that's how you have, make yourself even, um, even sharper. Even sharper. Coinbase will let you direct deposit your paycheck and convert it to crypto. So everybody can get paid in Bitcoin now. Or... Over a hundred of the crypto options that they have with no transaction fees. Coinbase Global on Monday unveiled a new feature that would allow users to deposit their paychecks directly into their accounts on the cryptocurrency exchange, further integrating digital assets into the realm of traditional banking. So they didn't allow them to use Lend. <laughs> you know, the, the SEC jumped on their back about their uh, product to use Lend where you would be able to buy USD coin and earn crazy interest off of it. it ain't crazy. It's the interest you should be earning off the money you allowing people to use. That's a whole discussion we should have. You know, when you put your money in the bank, they're able to issue out 10 times of what it is. So if you put in $10, maybe five, I think it's 10. You put in, I think it's 10. I think it's one, um, one, to, one to nine, something like that. But anyway, look it up. It is what it is. You put in 10, they can lend $100. Banks can do this legally. So you give them $10 in cash. They can turn around and lend $100 and charge interest on that. And you get paid, they get paid off like 3 4 5% interest off that $100 that they're lending. And they pay you nothing or 0 .00, be point, not 0 0.01% or 0.015%, something like that now. Is that fair? Doesn't sound fair to me, but who am I, correct? So they were going to, Coinbase was allow you to put your money into an account and get 8, 7, 9% interest off that same equivalent U.S. dollar. Who wouldn't choose that? You know? So the SEC said, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this. No, 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 no. You bullies. They're bullies. 
So anyway, Coinbase is gonna allow you now to donate part of your check into there, and you know you can change your entire check or part of your check. And if you put it like, look, like I said, Tezos, you get interest off of it. Algorand, Cosmos, and then some of their stable coins on um, Coinbase. You also, I think, like Dai or something, You also can get um, interest off of it. And then look, I just learned Solana. You put in your Ethereum. I'm sorry, your Exodus wallet. You get interest off that. You getting interest off that Cardano too. Cardano, you put in your Exodus wallet. You getting interest off that. Good interest. So. This metric conveys Bitcoin's ready to take off. And, you know, I'm not going to keep harping over the points. This talks about that a lot of the people who hold Bitcoin have been accumulating more Bitcoin. And they talk about the uh, ballot, the, the, the Rick Isley cycles, where it's never going to give you up, never going to let you down. You know, then you had this person together forever, slipping away. No more looking for love, falling out of love, and then never going to get you up. The, the Rick Ashley buying. So the people who have the most Bitcoin have been accumulating and getting more Bitcoin, even when it drops. So they'll, and, and you know, one thing Wells will do is it, Bitcoin to get high, then they'll sell off a bunch, right? And then people start panicking and selling theirs and they let it drop and they sold at the highest point. They chose when to, to start this process. And everybody starts selling all the way down, down to they be like, okay, now I start buying more in. And they get more than what they had. That is how the whales get bigger and the people who just FOMO all around and not paying attention and thinking with their hearts and not their heads get, you know, feel like, oh, the market's unfair or this happened. You, you have to learn, we'll, we'll talk about that. You have to learn that how to control your emotions and know that sometimes you will say, oh, I, I don't want to feel like a dummy and did it. No, cut your losses, move on. Is This is business, it's not personal. With that said, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.